Hi everyone, thanks for coming to my presentation this morning. Um, my name is Sean and I'm a, I am a human physiology major at Sargent College and my two advisors are Professor Linda Barnes of um, the School of Medicine and Professor Milton of the School of Public Health. Um, without both of them, I, this project would not be possible at all. Um, so what is this project about? So this, I grew up in China, so I was brought up in, um, with like traditional Chinese medicine. And also at the same time, when that didn't work, um, I obviously, uh, my parents took me to Western doctors. Um, and so, and as, a, as an inspiring physician, um, I thought it would be really interesting to combine my like cultural interest and also my professional and academic interests together. So this is the project that, that kind of like came out of it. Um, complementary and alternative medicine, an undergraduate pre-health perspective. So, before we continue, um, it's really important to see like what is complementary and alternative medicine. Um, basically, it's everything and anything that's not Western medicine. And we know that Western medicine is all about the surgeries, the pharmaceutical drugs, and the biomedical research. Whereas CAM, it's all about the acupuncture, the herbal remedies, um, you also have like Tai Chi. Um, it's, it contains, it's, it's from a lot of different cultures in, around the world, and there are just very many methods. Here um, in the United States, complementary and alternative medicine has grown very popular. Um, and we can see here, although this data is a little bit outdated, um, I think it still shows, um, there you go, it still shows um, the increased interest. So from 1990 to 1997, the black bars show the visits to complementary and alternative um, therapies. Um, it has risen around 50%, uh, whereas visits, patient visits in the United States to primary care physicians have remained rather constant. So with all this interest, doctors and medical students have realized that there is sort of a knowledge gap um, that needed to be filled in order to properly advise their patients when they have questions about complementary and alternative medicines. And so in medical schools, they started adding these CAM classes to the curriculum, and they also started offering continuing education to physicians. This, this um, in, in result, is helping to narrow this gap. However, there's still much more for us to learn, and this is where I hope to come in. So for our objective, we really want to find out what undergraduate pre-health students think about complementary and alternative medicine, and whether they're interested in taking um, an undergraduate elective on this subject. I think it's really important that you should care about this subject because um, the people that's, that has been surveyed in this um, project has been, um, and will become, hopefully, your future medical, your, your future doctors, and that will sort of influence your future medical care here in the United States. And how are we going about doing this? Um, we basically, we, I've, when I did my literature review, um, I found um, a previous survey that was used by uh, research at Georgetown University. They surveyed the attitude and opinions of Georgetown medical students on um, how they think about CAM and whether they're open to it or not. And then so I took that, I modified it for the undergraduate population. I also added some open response sections after each question. And then I sent the survey out an on anonymously through Qualtrics, which is like an online software. And then I, once I got the data, I made some quantitative and qualitative analysis. So who are the people that took this survey? Um, looking at this demographics table, I'm not sure if you guys can see the numbers, but the vast majority are um, female, around 80%. And, and when we, I asked them about the religion, um, most of them identified with the Abrahamic religions. So that's your Christians, your Jews, and your Muslims. And then when I asked them where they were from, like where their house is located, um, the majority preferred, said that they were from the suburbs. And the more interesting demographic that I, I was interested in was um, their medicinal worldview. So what type of medicine they sort of identify with? Um, the vast majority, 65%, uh, identified with Western medicine, whereas the other one that I'm interested in is holistic, which only accounted for 15% of the population. So what exactly is holistic medicine? As one open response, uh, uh, one open response person said, um, it's basically patient-centered, very big picture medicine. It has inclusion of um, both CAM methods and biomedical, method, uh, biomedical principles, and it's used dependent on what the patient needs. And this graph really helps to sort of summarize what holistic is all about. 
Um, it's about individualized care. Um, it's also about treating the body and the mind, um, curing and preventing diseases, and also the most importantly, the integration of CAM and Western medicine. Um, here is a graph. Um, on the x-axis, it, show, it shows the two groups that we're interested in, um, holistic and Western. And uh, on the y-axis, it shows the, uh, the odds ratio. It may not be the most traditional way of representing odds ratio, which is basically trying to tell you the likelihood of someone um, agreeing um, with a certain statement or not. And you, here you can see um, those who identified with holistic medicine, they are um, almost three times more likely to agree or strongly agree with the fact that uh, CAM knowledge is very important to them as future practicing health professionals. And this, is, this means that these people believe that CAM has a future in Western medicine and that the future care will be individualized and more patient-centered. In the next slide, you, it's also this, the, uh, the same type of graph, but the statement, is about, um, this sh the statement is about whether they agree or not agree that CAM methods can cure symptoms that Western medicine cannot. Here, those who identified with um, holistic medicine is almost 4.5 times more, as li more likely to agree with this statement when compared to those who identify with Western medicine. This is great because um, that means CAM can help bolster patient care at instances where Western medicine does not seem to be as effective. And in hindsight, I think um, pr it's probably preferable for me not to use the word cure because there are many chronic conditions in which it's more about managing the symptoms and making the patient feel more comfortable. And when we asked whether students were interested in taking an undergraduate CAM elective, um, s around 58% were interested while only 8.8% were uninterested. The, the, big, um, the other one third had no opinion. And I think this big group with no opinion, it's mostly due to the fact that people are still not really um, familiar with the terms and the concepts of CAM. But I think as, um, it's, as it becomes more mainstream, people will know more about it and they will be probably more curious to learn more, uh, learn more about CAM and maybe take the classes. And here in the next graph, um, I asked them whether they agree or disagree that clinical care should integrate the best of conventional and CAM practices. So this is basically asking again whether they believe that um, the future of medicine should be more holistic. And 70% agreed, with only 10% disagreed. Also, remember that in the demographic slide, um, we said that 65% of the population um, identified them with themselves as believing in solely Western medicine. And this 70% means that some of those people who identify solely with Western medicine also accept the fact that we should utilize CAM to make patient care better and more effective. And this last graph here shows the um, popularity in the sources of information, um, sources of information on CAM that people prefer. And quantitatively, professional recommendation was definitely the most popular. And this, this is good because um, that means the patients trust what doctors have to say. And this also means that it's more important for doctors and future medical pr professionals to know what they're talking about in order to give patients the right advice. The second most popular was media, which, is, which makes sense because we all watch TV, we all surf the web. Um, but it's also a little concerning because not everything on the web and on TV is geared towards the patient's um, benefit. And the third most popular is personal recommendations. And that's like whether your friend or your family tells you that they went to a great acupuncturist and that you should go to, um, to or anything like that. And when we looked at the open responses, interestingly, um, personal recommendations was definitely the most, or the more popular um, type of source of information when compared to um, professional recommendation. And we suspect that this is because personal connection definitely adds another layer of trust and credibility. And so in conclusion, um, we surveyed the undergraduate pre-health students at Boston University, and, we, and students self-identified themselves as either um, identifying with holistic or Western medicine. And we found that the majority of the students believe integration of CAM is important for the future of medicine, and that they also believe that CAM knowledge is important for future health professionals, and that more than half of them are interested in taking CAM classes. Overall, they have a positive attitude towards CAM, but see that the lack of research as a major barrier to the integration 
of CAM into conventional patient care. We hope that the undergrad undergraduate curriculum can reflect the increased interest of student population in um, CAM by offering more classes on the subject. And we um, hope that this, the results of this study will contribute to the field of serving um, medical professionals, students, and also undergrads on their opinions in CAM by providing the, uh, I guess, the niche of the pre-health population. And I think uh, after the semester is over, I plan on continuing to work on this project and hopefully submitting it for publishing in the summer or fall. And that is all. Questions? And thank you for coming and for your time and your attention. Anna. Um, so I know that you're attending the Med School in the Fall, correct? Thanks. Um, what camp courses do they offer, and are any of them required? Um, I probably don't know that much. Um, I know I think that they have like an integrative integrative medicine um, aspect of their curriculum. Um, I know that Natalie and Jamie are current medical students. They might know more about it than me. Um, sorry. Okay, so I think there's an elective, but I, as of yet, I don't think it's like part of the curriculum. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Um, in the open response sections, um, a lot of uh, students expressed, um, I guess, they're open to um, many of these alternative methods, but they're definitely concerned with the fact, with the lack of, I guess, um, scientific backing that comes with it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah, it definitely seems like there's sort of like a contradiction there. Um, and in terms of like discussion, um, when in terms of the qualitative analysis on that, um, I've talked with um, Professor Barnes um, about it. And so far, we're still trying to work out on why. And one thing we sort of hypothesize is that I think people subconsciously still, um, perhaps they don't agree that when when you ask them whether they identify with holistic or Western, they'll choose Western because they grew up here, they were indoctrinated, and they were taught in the way of the scientific method, and they only trust anything that's been scientifically proven. But then when you ask them, um, the clinical care should integrate the best of everything, then they will probably want the best for the patient, and they might overlook the fact that some of the methods weren't as scientifically proven as the Western medicine that they were taught about. Thank you, everyone. Oh, sorry.